This video deals with nightmares, which occur mostly in REM sleep. So if you're not familiar with REM sleep, it may be wise to view the last video, which covers REM sleep, before returning here. Very briefly, it appears that dreams in general, including nightmares, relate to the brain's nighttime work of memory processing. Now the brain, with its vast array of neural connections, clearly cannot process all of its memories every night, so it needs to be selective. It needs to process, reorganize, and develop information of importance to the sleeper. Information associated with strong emotions tends to be important, so the brain tends to remember emotion-related information, and at night it commonly calls up emotion-related information for review. That can happen any time, but at night it's especially likely to happen in REM sleep, the sleep stage of bizarre dreams where brain chemistry actively favors emotional processing. And it's especially likely to happen late in sleep, toward morning, when REM periods tend to be unusually long and strong. Well then, what happens if this emotional processing involves memories that the sleeper regards as fearful? What happens if this evokes a scary dream? And what happens if all of this raises the sleeper's level of consciousness to a point where the sleeper awakens, probably in a cold sweat with a rapidly beating heart? In plain English, the sleeper has had a nightmare. Nearly everyone has had nightmares from time to time. That's perfectly normal. But what if the nightmares recur in virtually the same form every night, or even several times a night? That's not normal. These nightmares are not normal. They constitute a recognized sleep disorder, which besides being unpleasant for the victim, can have a major impact upon the victim's sleep patterns and daily life. That's why it's worth focusing on why recurring nightmares happen, how they work, and how they can be resolved. Recurring nightmares generally happen because a hardwired part of the brain gets activated the same way on a recurring basis. That hardwired structure is the amygdala, a little almond-shaped body found under the temporal lobe near the hippocampus. This is the home of your fight-or-flight response. The amygdala has connections to many other brain areas and is set up to register traumatic events in ways you won't forget. So if you have, say, a car accident, you are likely to recall lots of related details, whereas similar memories from uneventful trips have disappeared. In effect, by storing these crisis-related memory connections in the amygdala, your brain has said, these traumatic events should be remembered because recalling them might get you out of trouble in the future. All this can get out of hand. Suppose, for example, that a battle-hardened soldier hears a clap of thunder. His amygdala may respond by preparing for an imaginary attack, causing unwanted fear and trauma. So sometimes the amygdala's responses can be over the top or out of context. In the land of dreams, of course, there is no context. The brain can call up anything it likes. And what it tends to call up, especially in REM sleep, is information with a strong emotional content. Normally, this is perfectly all right and can produce significant benefits. But what if the emotions are so strong that they rouse the amygdala and set off its fight-or-flight response, generating excitement, a pounding heart, sweats, and fear that commonly ends by awakening the dreamer? If this happens once, the dreamer has had a nightmare. If it happens many times, typically with similar memories being activated each time, the dreamer has become a victim of recurring nightmares. These recurring nightmares commonly afflict people with post-traumatic stress disorder, who besides their daytime problems may experience other sleep problems such as insomnia, sleep apnea, and periodic limb movements. <coughs> recurring nightmares also commonly occur in people suffering from anxiety, stress, depression, and other problems of an emotional nature. Overall, roughly 5% 
of the entire U.S. population and probably comparable percentages in other countries complain of recurring nightmares. So what can be done about it? Setting aside possible, often marginal, drug remedies, the really key thing is to understand what the brain is trying to do. The brain is trying to integrate emotional memories with other bits and pieces of stored information in a productive way. In the case of recurring nightmares, it has simply gotten stuck. It is having difficulty navigating the neural patterns that evoke the nightmares. So if you can help the brain to do what it has been trying to do all along, that can help to reduce or even to resolve the nightmares. Two of the more common methods used today are called exposure therapy and imagery rehearsal therapy. Exposure therapy has the patient write down his or her nightmares and relive them in his or her imagination during the day. Imagery rehearsal therapy likewise has the patient write down his or her nightmares. However, it then has the patient re-script the nightmares to provide a less distressing ending. A nightmare about a threatening bear, for example, might be re-scripted to imagine the bear being harmless or friendly, and this re-scripted version of the nightmare is then imagined repeatedly in the day, or even at night to the extent that one has control over one's nightmares. These are not new remedies. Rather, they hearken back to nightmare remedies recommended by Carl Jung over a century ago. Like Jung's remedies, they usually involve some guidance from a professional, which today typically means a few visits to a psychologist or psychotherapist. But unlike Jung's remedies, which seemed to work but were unproven, there is mounting scientific evidence that these and other so-called cognitive behavioral therapies for recurring nightmares really work. They don't necessarily work for everyone, and in many cases the degree of success achieved is less than total. But for those who would like to reduce the frequency and the intensity of their recurring nightmares, now is a good time to act. The enemy is mostly ignorance, for we have excellent methods with a reasonable track record Methods that, with appropriate professional supervision, are generally considered easy to implement and safe. Of course, many of those with recurring nightmares have associated ailments like post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety disorders, or depression. But we have come to realize that the nighttime memory processing of sleep is important to welfare in the day. So treating one sleep disorder independently of other associated ailments can sometimes have a beneficial impact not only on that disorder, but upon the general situation. For example, in some PTSD and depression cases, imagery rehearsal therapy has done more than just reduce the frequency and intensity of nightmares. In some PTSD cases, it has also cut other nighttime symptoms such as insomnia and restless leg syndrome. And in some cases of both PTSD and depression, it has reduced the daytime symptoms of these ailments. This brings me to the end of this video on recurring nightmares. For those who are interested in other sleep disorders and in relationships between sleep disorders and daytime problems, I invite you to view the two remaining videos in this series on sleep.